You're top six in both opponent points off turnovers and opponent fast break points. Those are points of emphasis in the preseason, and that's gone well. So what's been the problem instead? With what? Overall for your defense. Well, the one thing you didn't mention is that we're 30th in paint points allowed at 57 and a half, which is actually a slight improvement going into the Minnesota game was at 60. So we jumped two and a half points in the right direction. Um, but to your point, usually when you're, when you're bleeding in the paint like we are right now, I automatically go to, well, how many fast break points a game are we giving up? How many second chance points per game are we giving up? Um, points off turnovers. And all three of those are really, we're top ten at all those. So it gets back to, you know, our ability to guard one-on-one, -on -one, having better KYP discipline. A lot of it's in the details. And then behind that, you know, if you, if you don't have a you know, great rim protector, you got to be great on the ball at the point of attack. And right now, obviously, uh, we're not helping ourselves with that. And, um, you know, so we can do a better, better job there. The three-point defense has been okay. Uh, I think the numbers say it's better than it has been. I think the three-point defense has to still improve quite a bit. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, going into game six, we haven't won a game at home yet. Um, coming off of a tough loss last night, we go on a 25-3 to run, go up by 10 with 3.30 to go, and they close 15-2. to And, uh, you know, kind of similar to that Clipper game, you know, two games where we have the lead in the fourth quarter and don't close it out. Uh, and that's a combination of um, poor execution, uh, not taking care of the ball, and then if you're struggling on offense, obviously uh, your defense has to be great. And last night, obviously, it seemed like the end of the game, uh, we, we just didn't have much left to uh, to weather the storm on either end. And you're building off of I just asked, I was going to ask you, your defensive numbers are very different, right? Both good and bad. Your foul numbers are way better. Your shooting defense is the same as what it was a year ago. I think it's your rebounding numbers are very different. Is this a scheme change or just a small sample size? Or what's your thoughts on why the yeah, are definitely, uh, definitely not a scheme change. You know, I mean, uh, we're we're doing a lot of the th same things that we've done. You know, last year, you know, we were top eight in offense and defense, one of three teams to do so. Um, you know, but right now, you know, we're just uh, teams are almost half of teams' points are coming in our paint. You know, that that's a that's a tough number to overcome. And uh, you know, you look last night. Our paint defense early was great, but our three-point defense was killing us. Um, so it's just a matter of one is early in the season, uh, not a scheme change, but we have to challenge ourselves to be better. And, and as a coaching staff, I and our staff, we, we have to help them to be better as well. And again, too many uh, possessions late where um, we I, I felt I could have helped our team more to kind of maybe stop that run that they were on. Um, so. Um, we're all in this together, and we're going to try to find a way to be better tonight. In what ways do you think just it seems like the team is progressing in a, in a positive direction just from where it started at the opener to now? Just in what ways do you think is that progress really being shown? Um, well, I mean, it was shown in two wins. <laughs> you know, that's, that's always the uh, – regardless of stats and analytics, like, you know, it's, this is a win-lose uh, business. So obviously to go two on one on that road trip and have a great chance to go three and zero on that road trip. Um, obviously, I, I think the bench unit, you know, was kind of really struggled early. Had a really tough stretch in that first half last night. Um, but you know, we had some bench guys out there last night as, as part of that twenty-five to three run. You know, that we're down ten. Next thing you know, we're up ten, and that was with Jamal Murray in the back in concussion protocol. So. Um, I think some of the new guys and some of the bench guys may be getting a little bit more comfortable playing with each other. Um, Aaron's been great. Can't ask Aaron Gordon to do much more. We know that Cole is already playing at an elite level. Um, and, and I think Michael Porter is slowly kind of finding his rhythm. You know, we need Mike and Jamal to be great. You know, we can talk all we want about other things, but we need Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray to be great for us. And while Jamal is out, you know, it's going to be an opportunity for some other guys to step up. Coach, you gave uh, Hunter Tyson some brief minutes in the last couple of games. What did you think of his play, and can he be a contributor? Yeah, I thought he was really good last night. You know, and it's tough to really analyze five minutes and 43 seconds, but uh, they weren't at the end of a game. It wasn't garbage time. They were real minutes. And, and what Hunter Tyson showed me is that, Coach, you can trust me. I will go out here. 
I'll be disciplined, I'll be aggressive, I'll be physical, and I'll do whatever you ask me to do. And uh, as I think I, I said to Scott after the game, in those minutes, those opportunities, when I call upon a player like Hunter who has not played a lot to go out there, they're sink or swim minutes. And he swam last night, and he showed me that I can continue to call upon him, and he's going to go out there and do his job. And uh, I was proud of him for doing so. And obviously, the, the, the one thing that you're always striving to do as a player is to earn your coach's trust, and he's doing that. How do you build Jamal's minutes tonight? I think Jamal and Nicole have the most combos of either picking all the handoffs in the leagues. So not having that, how much does it alter play calls or what you do play? Yeah, well, I think that was part of, you know, the end of the game last night. You know, uh, when you have two guys that are two of the best closers in the business in terms of Jamal and Nicola and how well they play off of each other, um, you know, you could see that some guys were in, in positions that they hadn't been before with this group. Um, so with no Jamal Murray, obviously you have a guy like Russell Westbrook. Uh, you know, Julian Strother, when Jamal first went out, I put Julian in the game. You know, um, yeah, I think he's a guy that can be a combo guard for us. CB did it last year. And, uh, you know, obviously we have some young players in Jalen Pickett and Trey Alexander who you could always throw out there as well. But um, that's the thing, man. We don't have another Jamal Murray in our roster. So we just got to find different ways to be effective and efficient on that end of the floor. I'll give you one, Scott. <laughs> At Media Day, you said you guys wanted to be at 35, 36 threes per game. So far, you guys are 30.4, which is kind of similar territory to last year where you're bottom in volume, but you guys are top 15 in attempts. So is, is getting that number of attempts up still a priority, and what does it look like getting there? Getting more makes is more of a priority for me. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you can take all the threes that you want, but you know, this is a make-or-miss league. And um, you know, I think our three-point offense is middle of the pack. Um, and you're right, you know, we're below where we were last year. It's funny, I was looking at some of the stats when you break down the three-point shot. Because you can look at the three-point shot in general, but there's so many more details that go within it. And just look at the difference from our left corner to right corner. One corner we shoot 42, the other corner we shoot 18 on the same volume. But that, to me, is one of the mystery. Like, how and how can they go 42 to 18? Um, wide open. You know, we, we generate 18 wide open threes per game but we're shooting 27th on wide open three-point percentage. And, and obviously part of that may be designed by opposing defenses to see, all right, well, we got to take away Nicole. Let's see if anybody else can make a shot. But um, I, I do think that we can get that number up. Um, but more importantly, you know, um, get the right guys shooting them where they're most comfortable and um, let's make some because that, that helps our defense out a ton. You talked about... Jamal along on and him and Nicola late in games. And we've seen them, whether they play great games or bad games, Jamal against the Lakers in the postseason, he's not afraid to have the ball in his hands. But that's that's a talent. Is that is that coachable? Is that trainable? How how can you get somebody to that point where at the end of the game they're not afraid of the basketball? Well, I think for those two in particular, I, I think it's the thousands and thousands of reps. You know what I mean? That's what it comes down to. You can try to, I'm going to put this guy out there with Nicole and it's just going to happen. I think anything. It's just the, the repetition. Uh, and from that repetition comes confidence and comfort and, and the ability to read one another. I say it all the time. I said they're great at closing because, yes, they're great players and they're both supremely confident. And you mentioned Jamal's two game winners against the Lakers. You know, but they can communicate without saying a word to each other. And the, the Brooklyn game, the Toronto game, those guys end of games were making every play for us. And obviously we didn't have Jamal last night and may not have him for a little bit here. So now we got to find some other guys to help put them in the right spot. And again, that's my job to help them in those situations so we can be better than we were last night. Thank you, Coach. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you.